Hello, Internet. I am going to show you guys a tour of my 1870s house that I have outfitted completely with HomeKit devices. It's a fairly big house and I have an enormous amount of HomeKit devices. If there's anybody who has more HomeKit devices than I do, I think they might have to be committed. I think I might have to be committed. Um, I am an early adopter. I love Apple technology and I've been interested in home automation for quite some time. I never felt that Z-Wave or Insteon or SmartThings were getting it exactly right. And, you know, honestly, Apple's HomeKit isn't perfect yet, but it is pretty freaking cool. And it's not just cool, but it's also enabled me to do things with my really old house where the wiring hasn't been correct in multiple rooms. I've had switches where they're not supposed to be or, or lights that are inexplicably being controlled in different locations that don't make sense and using HomeKit I've been able to actually uh, improve the setup in my house without having to rewire things which is pretty neat. So I'm going to go through and uh, show you my house. Before I show you all the devices that I have in my house which are plenty I wanted to show you quickly the different apps that you can use to control these devices. Um, most of the HomeKit manufacturers use their own app, but you don't actually have to use their app. Uh, you know, the Elgato Eve app is a fairly good one. It, um, you know, has a lot of features to it, but you can also use a third-party app. Um, and my favorite one is called Home, and um, it is, you know, one that really should have been included um, by Apple. I, I hope Apple eventually designs their own home app, but for now this one does a great job. So you can see here that there is a list of all of your devices by room. And you have to create the rooms that you want. Um, and it's important to actually kind of make a room for each actual room you have in your house so that you can tell Siri to control these devices by voice. So you would say, for instance, turn on all the living room lights or turn off the middle room lights um, or the office lights and so forth. Beyond rooms, you can actually use, so the, the, this is a list of all the rooms that I have. You can use zones as a way to control multiple rooms at once. And I'm surprised no one ever came up with this before. This is um, the, you know, I think HomeKit is the first time I was ever exposed to the idea of zones and rooms, but zones are a collection of rooms. Um, the downstairs zone includes all the downstairs rooms. Upstairs obviously includes all the upstairs rooms. Outside I've designed to include all the porches um, for the porch lights and that way you could say turn on all the outside lights or turn off all the outside lights. I designed a basement as a separate zone because I wanted to control it separately. Uh, we rent an apartment, I made that a separate zone and I have a home office which is a separate zone. The other major thing are scenes. You can design scenes that can be executed uh, to perform multiple actions at one time and I'm going to show you how this works in real life but um, there are some good ones here like for instance good night and you tell it to perform all these actions. Turn off certain lights, uh, good morning, um, when I have a hard time getting up in the morning I say set the good morning scene and it will basically turn the lights on for me, open, uh, it can open the shades. So um, triggers are a whole different thing that I'll talk about. I might even make a whole separate video for triggers because um, it's very customizable and very powerful for a way to automate your home and uh, it kind of needs a more lengthy explanation. But uh, um, all the different devices that I have in the house can be controlled using this app and um, but I'm going to actually walk you through the house, which will be more exciting than just looking at an app. As I mentioned, I have a home that was built around 1870, and this is the exterior of it. Um, as you can see, it's Halloween, and we got into the Halloween spirit with a whole bunch of decorations. But one thing I wanted to show you is the way that I've used the Hue light strips along the top edge of the outside. Now, the Hue light strips are not necessarily rated for outdoor use, so I'm curious to see how well they fare. They may very well die out on me, but what I came up with was a nice um, 
idea to, you know, instead of putting up um, light strips for different holidays, you could actually use the same light strip and change the colors. So um, here we go. Turn on the front porch light strip. Now you can't really see it because it's broad daylight, but uh, it's orange and uh, maybe I'll get a picture of it later on when it's nighttime. But uh, it is really bright, nice looking color for Halloween, but you might change it. The other thing is I have a Lutron uh, switch set up for the front porch light so that it can turn on uh, right at sunset. Turn on the front porch light. Okay, the front porch light is turned on. And it did. Turn off the front porch lights. Okay, the front porch light is turned off. Turn off the front porch light strip. Okay, the front porch light strip is turned off. Now, coming into the house here, this is uh, my front hallway. Now I have two Lutron switches here. Um, one is the one that controls the front porch light. This one is not actually a wired uh, switch. This one is actually a Pico remote control, which can be used to control various other Lutron switches. Now here's the thing with my front porch, I mean my front hallway. Um, as I mentioned, this is an old house. The light switch for this hall is behind here. So this is obviously not an ideal spot for a light switch. I mean, who's ever going to want to walk all the way in here, turn it on there? I mean, by that point, you've been walking through a dark hallway for a while. So this is wired, but you can actually now, I, I set up a remote control switch right here so that when you open the door to the hallway, you can turn it on or off and it works you know very quickly just like a real light switch and then I attached another Pico remote over here so essentially I have created um, the way the light switches should have worked from the beginning just by doing it this way on off and, and these basically what I did was they have they have adhesive sticking on the back and you just stick it on there and then you have um, so this is just stuck on there with adhesive and that one's wired and they have these little two gang wall plates you can use to uh, connect connect them. So, you know, I, my wife isn't pleased about the expenditures of these home kit devices, but she does like the fact that it was very well um, thought out. I mean, in terms of allowing you to put switches where they were supposed to. Uh, we have a bathroom back here. Turn on the front hall bathroom light. Sorry, I was Turn on the front hall bathroom light. Sorry, I wasn't able hmm. to do that. You know, I might have something wrong with that setup for why it wasn't able to do that. But like I said, I mean Siri's not perfect. It actually HomeKit isn't perfect. It makes mistakes. It's not um, hundred percent reliable, but it is pretty good. So this is my living room. Um, strange thing about the living room is that it had different lights controlled uh, completely differently. So um, this light was controlled by a switch here. That light was controlled by a switch there. And that light over there um, wasn't uh, wired or connected um, in any way. But I wanted to control the lights all together naturally. I think that's how most people want to do it. But uh, again, Lutron switches were the way that I accomplished that. So um, one wired switch, one wired switch. That one is a lamp dimmer plug-in, which I can show you. Um, there is a plug-in right there, and um, that makes it also connect with the Lutron devices. So there is a smart bridge that is connected directly into my router, and um, they all work together, or theoretically they do. Uh, turn off the middle room lights. I'm not sure I under turn off the middle room lights. All right, they're all turned off. Turn on the middle room lights. Okay, the lights are turned on. And it turned them all on. So, 
um, you know, that, that one that we saw um, the, uh, on the other, um, the front hall bathroom, I don't know why it wouldn't turn on. Um, I have an Ecobee 3 thermostat here, and um, these are pretty cool because not only do, do they work with Siri, well, theoretically they do, what is the middle room thermostat set at? Middle room is at 63 degrees. Yep, it is. Um, set the middle room thermostat to 65 degrees. Okay, Shaw here. I set the middle room to about 65 degrees. All right, and it did that. So um, over here is our uh, living room. Again, um, Lutron switch. Uh, well, actually, so the Lutron switch over here, um, the deal again was that this light switch was in the wrong location. This was the one and only light switch to control the um, chandelier there, but not, not a great location for it. A Pico remote allowed me to put uh, the light switch right here, which is where you would want to use it as you come in. Um, I went ahead and set up another one to turn on the lamp um, so that the lamp there is ready. Um, to use um, you know more easily than going back there and turning it on and just for a little bit of ambiance and fun um, this is actually a Philips Hue dimmer it comes off as a remote if you want it to be the wall plate sticks on with adhesive so I um, basically just stuck that on there and um, I have those turn on but what I really kind of like doing is using different colors Make the living room closet lights red. Red coming right up. And as you can see, it turned red, which um, the effect is cooler at night. But um, the uh, these are my devices here. The this button here controls the shades, and this here is an Ecobee thermostat sensor, which um, it's kind of cool because what it does is this also senses senses motion and temperature and it's a sensor an additional sensor for that thermostat over there so when motion is sensed in this room it will read this the temperature of this sensor and it will average out the temperature in that room and this room or any other room that, that has motion in it um, and uh, so you um, you'll be able to theoretically get the comfort level where you want it for the room you're in so um, these shades um, are controlled by the remote control. You, the, you can actually control these shades with Siri, even though Lutron says you can't. The thing is you can because these shades themselves can be controlled with the HomeKit app. And because they can be controlled with the HomeKit app, you can add them to scenes. So um, right now, let me go to the living room. Um, and you'll see that the shades are getting progressively, um, the percentages are going down and down. That just uh, is how they read, whether they're open or closed. But you can actually, you know, switch these with HomeKit. So you don't get to say, like, Siri, open my shades, unless you make a scene, which I have done for some room some rooms. So um, anyway, that is, um, that's the functioning of shades in, uh, in a home kit room. I'll actually show you how they function with scenes in a different room. Over here is my dining room. Turn on the dining room lights. Okay, uh, turned on. Uh, you know, again, this is another situation where this room only had one switch. Uh, this switch over here is the actual wired switch. Uh, none of the other switches um, existed. So if you wanted to turn on the dining room lights, you had to come in and use them here. But um, it obviously makes more sense to have a uh, additional switch in every entrance. So these are Pico remotes. Again, these are actually not um, wired in any way. So these, I just stick to the wall. Um, they're battery operated. The batteries are supposed to last some three years. Um, and uh, you stick them on there, and then you get to control the lights from multiple locations. So it's, um, 
It's actually really cool and also just really useful. Over here, bathroom. Um, the situation with the with this bathroom was another odd deal with an old house. Um, this light here was controlled with the switch here. This light here was controlled by um, a light up uh, a switch uh, right there. But it doesn't really make sense to have you know two lights controlled separately. And so uh, what I did is put hue bulbs in both of those hue uh, white bulbs because they didn't really need col color in this look. I wired that switch hot, put in an electrical outlet, so that switch is always hot and always powering that one. And then uh, this one is a hue dimmer switch and that's how I control um, the lights here. So you can turn them off and turn them on. And it works very quickly, so kind of cool. The, um, the back uh, side porch here, I was able to put a switch in a very tight spot that you would never want to put a wired switch and never really work, but um, you know, it just made sense to me as I open the uh, side porch there, I would turn on the light um, as opposed to where the light switch was um, back here. This was the one and only light switch for how you turn that on. And that didn't really make a whole lot of sense because you're walking through the whole place to turn the light switch on. Wouldn't you rather um, turn it on right here? So that's what I set up. Kitchen. Um, over here, we had another deal where the, there's one light switch and there's two chandeliers. So, um, and this one here was just a wired switch that didn't seem to control anything. So what I did was have this remote turn on both, uh, both lights there, which we used to be controlled separately and they can be controlled with Siri as well. Turn off the kitchen lights. Turn off the kitchen lights. Sorry, I wasn't able to do that. Yeah, sometimes it just doesn't want to do it for you. Turn off the kitchen lights. Sorry, I wasn't able to do that. Try again. Let's see here. Turn off the kitchen light. Sorry, I wasn't able to do that. You know, I really don't know why it won't do it for me, but that is pretty much accurate. I mean, sometimes Siri works and sometimes it doesn't. Um, another Ecobee thermostat, uh, hue dimmers over here. Now, um, one thing I wanted to show you guys is um, coffee maker. Wouldn't it nice to be, have all your, um, you know, have your coffee ready in the morning? And you can buy, uh, you know, a special coffee maker for that, or you could use um, one of these iHome smart plugs. And so basically I set this on a schedule so that this plug um, will activate and turn on at about 6.30 in the morning. Um, you got the coffee ready to go, so it, when it turns it on, it activates and starts making the coffee. Um, over here, this is my kids' play area. Notice the uh, huge ball pit, which is a lot of fun for the kids, but um, I also put in a huge tap switch because the kids like to have multiple um, colors, you know, just, just to mess around, but the thing is that obviously the kids don't have an iPhone, so um, unless I'm going to have Siri and change it for them, they need a, a tap switch because the hue dimmers can only be one color. Um, the hue tap switch is a different way. So um, what you can do is program three different scenes. So we've got purple. Um, another one is just a usual white. And one is kind of a uh, mixture, purple and blue. That's just what my kids liked. Um, over here on this end, we have a Pico remote that controls the shades in this room, as well as an Ecobee thermostat sensor that will allow this room's temperature to be red in addition to um, the, you know, the, where the actual thermostat is, and it'll average out the temperatures. We get a lot of cold weather here, and this room gets colder than the other room, so that way it'll, um, you know, allow that to be taken into account. All right, moving on. I think we're ready to uh, kind of go up to my office here. Um, there was never any light switch at the bottom here. Um, this is just a Pico remote. You can use it to turn on the lights in the office. Um, Lutron switches that control the office porch light and this uh, interior area here. And so over here we had um, you know one 
uh, pull chain bulb. Um, so I've um, added a Pico remote there. I mean, you can't use a Lutron switch to control a pull chain bulb because it's not wired to anything. So that's where Hue switches uh, come in handy. Uh, my conference room for my office, and Lutron switch here to control it. And uh, got my kind of uh, kitchen area for my office, Lutron switch. Um, and the Lutron switch here as well as an Ecobee thermostat. But my office is its own separate zone. So you can see here that all of the office lights are on, at least right now. So um, what I can do here is set it up to um, turn on all the office lights. And I can kind of see here now why. Oh, there we go. Turn off the office lights. And as you can see here, it turned off all the lights. So that's kind of um, just a benefit of zoning in HomeKit. You can zone different rooms. Um, and let's just do that again. Turn on all the office lights. OK, the lights are turned on. And you can see they mean they all turned on. So um, pretty cool there. I am going to take us to the upstairs of the house. One interesting thing here is you can use these battery operated switches to put switches where you normally wouldn't. I mean this is a bizarre place, some might say a really stupid place to put a uh, light switch, but the thing is that um, there's not a whole lot of other great spots to put it and what I needed was, see that um, light right there, that's my back porch light, and um, I wanted to be able to turn them on, so I used hue bulbs in there and a hue dimmer switch, and um, you know it it works. So turn on the back porch light, and you okay. can see the lights are turned on. Turned on. You can turn them off using the switch there. Uh, Lutron switches for the back stairs. Uh, bedroom. So. Uh, in the bedroom, I could not fit a Lutron switch in here just because of the uh, molding and uh, just wouldn't fit. So what I did was put in some uh, Hue bulbs and a Hue tap switch. Um, not a tap switch, but a Hue dimmer switch. And um, you can see the light turns on. Um, Ecobee thermostat over here as well as, as a remote that controls the shades. So um, I have shades all the way over here. Again, Siri doesn't directly control these like you can't say close the bedroom shades, but what you can do is set up a scene. So set set the close the bedroom shades scene. Your wish is my command and lo, close the bedroom shades. So you see um, it's closing all the bedroom shades. Um, they're all being closed here. Let me turn the light on. Uh, hue, hue dimmer switch over here. Um, and uh, so, you know, I have a, a scene set up, um, a good morning scene, and you can actually, uh, um, you know, well, here I can probably set up an, a little demonstration for you. Set the I'm awake scene. Your wish is my command, and lo, good morning. Um, so, you know, turns on the lights, um, you can have it open the shades as well. Um, just a bathroom over here. Um, have it set up to uh, be controlled with a dimmer switch there. Um, hue bulb inside there. Um, hue tap switch here because, um, you know, it helps to have things be able to be controlled manually for people who don't have access to my phone. So, um, nice. Uh, relaxing scene there. A dim bulb uh, for when you get up in the middle of the night and just your usual. So that's a tap switch. Moving on, um, got a laundry room here um, which again uh, too small of an area to put an actual switch there but um, turn on the laundry room lights. Sorry, I wasn't in Turn on the laundry room light. 
Huh. You know, I think um, it's, again, it just sometimes doesn't really seem to work. Um, just looking at it, um, you know, you've got the laundry room bulbs there, and uh, yeah, I don't know why it wasn't allowing Siri to do it, but turn them on like that, it works. Turn it off with the tap switch. Try one more time with Siri. Turn on the laundry room lights. That may be Turn on the laundry room lights. Okay, the lights are turned on. Okay, thank you. Um, I've got a bathroom over here again with um, Ecobee sensor because I wanted to average out the temperature in this room and uh, tap switches there. Um, you know, it's kind of fun to uh, turn the upstairs bathroom light blue. Your wish is my command and low light blue. Turn the upstairs bathroom light yellow. Light yellow, coming right up. Make the upstairs bathroom red. Hmm, I could... Make the upstairs... Good, what? <laughs> Make the upstairs bathroom light blue. I actually already did that. <laughs> Keep saying light blue, I mean to say uh, just blue. But, um, uh, got a room over here for, um, for my little two-year-old, and... You know, the thing is here that um, I have the baby monitor automatically turn on with a uh, iHome smart plug. You'll notice I have these all duct taped up. And the thing is that these actually, um, they have a, a lot of LED lights on them. And I don't know why manufacturers always do that because, um, you know, it disturbs the kid's sleep. And so I duct taped them up. This one controls the child's um, baby monitor, so I have it automatically turn on. Um, you know, around seven o'clock when she goes to bed. Um, I've got another one here. Um, Amazon sells these little lights. They kind of tell the kid when it's okay to wake up. Kind of, and so, like Pavlov's dog, um, it's turn on at uh, around 6.30 in the morning when it's okay for the kids to wake up. And um, they snap up and wake up right when I, right when I do that. Um, another Ecobee thermostat here and um, got another kid here um, who lives in this room. He's four, almost five, and so what we've done here is the same thing. Um, let me see if I can demonstrate this properly. Turn on Desmond's room monitor. Well, okay. Turn off Desmond's room monitor. Sorry, Shalier. Turn off the devices in Desmond's room. Well, yeah, it worked. So, as you can see, I mean, there are definitely hiccups with Siri, but overall, you're not always going to be using Siri to control your stuff. I mean, that's not really necessarily the main point of HomeKit is to use Siri. And part of it, um, as I've described, is just the benefit of having switches in the locations where you want them and uh, not always having to, um, you know, you, you, basically, the power of scenes is is something that I think is very helpful. So, um, Ecobee, you can see I have a couple of sensors there that average out 65 degrees in the um, sensor in the hallway, but in uh, my little baby's room at 64 degrees, um, the other room is 62. So what happens is it it averages out um, the temperatures to give you one um, kind of comfortable atmosphere. You know, I think that's all I really wanted to show you right now. Um, if you have questions, definitely let me know. I mean, I have spent a lot of time troubleshooting these devices. I have found uh, little mistakes that have been a real pain. Um, HomeKit has issues. Um, I will be glad to answer questions and uh, discuss it with you guys. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video, and um, let me know if you have any